Yeah, so me and Charles have agreed to have a discussion on our worldviews. I'm a Christian. Charles is a uh, being moved along. Okay. Yeah, we've ha we've agreed to have a discussion. I'm a Christian. I'm going to represent the Christian worldview. Charles is going to um, represent the atheist worldview. If I'm right there. Agnostic. Atheist. Okay, agnostic. Agnostic atheist. Okay. So. Go ahead, I'll let you start. You mentioned proof beforehand. Yeah, you said before that you have proof of God. I, know, I didn't say that. You said, do you have proof? And do I, you have and proof I said, of God? Let's, let's pick up from there. So do you have? Okay, so in regards to proof, what is proof in your worldview? If all we are is evolved pond scum, we're evolved bacteria, we evolved from the primordial ooze into fish and now we're human beings, you know, the monkeys are, are our ancestors. What is proof in your worldview? Because I would say this, Charles, I would say that proof, in the Christian worldview, I would say proof presupposes truth. And if tr proof presupposes truth, truth presupposes that there is in fact a God. Because without God, there's no such thing as proof. Stuts say that again? Presuppose okay. proof. truth. Okay, you, you asked for proof, yes? yes? You asked me for proof. I say this, proof presupposes truth. Truth presupposes the existence of God, because without God, there is nothing true. Stuff just happens. Where did you get God from? Where you jumped from truth to God? No, no, I'm pointing out, I'm pointing out the logical flow. You're saying, give me proof. I'm saying that proof presupposes truth. Truth presupposes God, because without God, there is no such thing as truth. Therefore, if there's no such thing as truth, something can't be proven to be true. Once again, presupposes the truth. Yes. There's a gap, and then God. <laughs> no. Proof presupposes truth. Truth presupposes the existence of a God, because without God, there's nothing true. I would say this. That in my worldview, I can say things are true because of the existence of God. God says, this is right, that is wrong, therefore it's true not to murder. Therefore it's true not to rape and pillage a village, for example. In your worldview, I'm trying to get to this. In your worldview, why is it true that murder is wrong? <clears throat> why is it true in your worldview that murder is in fact wrong? It depends on the context. Okay, give me a context where murder is okay. If my children were about to be <clears throat> savagely yes, that, murdered... I wouldn't say that's murder. That's not murder. You're, you're, you're making a category error. Murder is, for example, if me and you have a disagreement and I stab you and you die. That's me murdering you, yes? yes. But, you know, we have examples in the Old Testament where somebody, you know, there's a law in the Old Testament where if somebody breaks into your house and you strike them and they die, yes. <clears throat> you're, the, the Bible says that you are not guilty of bloodshed because they broke into your house. It's not murder, it's, it's a killing, it's, a, it's an act of self-defense, okay? It then says that if you go out in the daytime and find this person and then kill them, that's murder. There's, there's a category there, so I think you're mixing up categories. Killing someone who's broken into your house or is about to kill your daughter, I wouldn't say that's murder, that's, that's a justified self-defense. You're Mur not saying that. that that's a, the Bible, Just, that's a justified self-defense. Murder is if I go over there and stamp him to death for no reason, that's murder. And again, I said we have a biblical example for that. So again, in your worldview, what, where is, why is it wrong to murder? Why is it true that murder is in fact wrong? Because in my worldview, <clears throat> you are harming someone for, for no reason. Okay, again, in your worldview, now again, in your worldview it causes a problem. You're harming someone, so therefore it's wrong. In your worldview, if all we are is evolved on scum, if all we are is evolved bacteria, if we're just chemical reactions, our, our brains are just fizzing. Yes. If that's the case, then why is it wrong to harm someone? We've evolved okay. to have an intelligence, okay. to construct ideals, morals, we can do that. So if we evolved in a different way, yes. where we said murder is in fact right, would it then be right? That's a hypothetical one. Well, of course, yeah, but, it, it, yeah, but you're saying that we evolved to say, you evolved to make these rules, that this is right and that's wrong. If we evolved in another way, and we said murder is right and letting other people live is wrong, would that then be okay, in your worldview, to be consistent? To be consistent? You're using a hypothetical. Okay, let's not go over hypothetical. Let's go over fact, because ultimately your argument is the society makes the rules, might makes right, and we have to follow that. 
Okay, I won't use a hypothetical, I'll use a real life example. Nazi Germany, they killed gays, gypsies, black people, Jews, by the, by the boatloads, okay? I would say that's wrong, okay? So we're gone. Okay, okay, this, this is the problem. I'm saying it's wrong because I have, a, I have a standard by which I can appeal to to say that's wrong. You don't have that. So I would say in my world view it's wrong. You said I don't one, one second, one second. I would say it's wrong, and I'm glad you say it's wrong, but I'm about to show you why it's inconsistent for you to say it's wrong. I'm saying it's wrong because I have a moral standard to appeal to. God is my moral standard. He says this is right, this is wrong. We shouldn't kill our other individuals because they are made in the image of God. Okay? In your worldview, if all we are to evolve on scum, and let's bear this in mind, you've just said that if, that if our society evolves to make the rules in one way, we have to follow that. When Nazi Germany, as a society, said, you know, the, 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 the Nazi government said it's okay to kill the Jews, the gays, the gypsies, the blacks, the Irish, and whoever else there was, they said that's okay to do. Why is it when they evolve that way, and you know Ger Nazi Germany says this is okay to do? Why do you still say that's wrong, considering your last statement where you said the society makes the rules? Because if the society makes the rules, and that's how we should follow, the Nazi Germany we should have left them alone. We should we should not have intervened. But what we've done was we borrowed we've actually borrowed from the Christian worldview, where we said that's not that's not just a Jew, that's a person. That's not just a gypsy, that's a person. That's not just a black person, that's a that's that's a human being, you can't treat people like that. So when we rightly stepped in and stopped them, we are borrowing from the Christian worldview when we say those individuals have value. But in your worldview, if the society makes the rules, we should have left them there. We should have just let them decide. It's their, it's their society that might make the rules. Do you see what I'm hitting at? I do. Did I state my objective worldview? No, but you did say the society makes the rules. And I'm pointing out, not hypothetical, I'm pointing out a real life situation in Nazi Germany where a society made a set of rules that you now disagree with. Yeah, so, yeah. once again, is that an objective worldview of all societies? Well, Nazi Germany? Yes. And of course not, because we disagreed. So, but what I'm saying here is, if you're saying that, 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 that the, the society makes rules and we have to follow those rules, when they said this, this is what we're going to do, we're going to kill gays, gypsies, Jews and blacks, when we over here in our worldview, in our society, say, that's wrong, we're not going to allow you to do that, yes. you're ultimately arguing, you are arguing for subjective morality. And if that's the case, when the Nazis and us over here, our subjective morality clashed. They said it's okay to do, we said it's wrong to do. Which one of those is right and why? So, once again, we do not have an objective worldview. We have subjective within the objective. So a society can deem something as wrong and we don't have to follow what, what everyone says, we make up our, our own minds. But a moment ago you just said that the society makes the rules and we have to follow that. So what if the society like Germany today in England, they decided to kill all Chinese people? Would that then be okay? So we look at the what's going on, is that right, is that harmful to a fellow human being? If it's wrong, then we can object it. But this goes back to my original point. In your worldview, why is it wrong to harm someone? Because you're going to rightly say it's wrong to harm someone because it is, is damaging to the society, it causes individual pain, therefore we shouldn't do it. If that's the case, then we should shun pain and we should uh, head towards what causes us pleasure. Now, what about the psychopath? There are psychopaths, Charles, that get pleasure from causing people pain. Yes. So what makes them wrong? If it's all about pleasure and pain, why is it wrong for the psychopath to kill an individual? Because the psychopath is getting pleasure from their pain. Why is the psychopath therefore wrong? So, objectively, we don't all live like psychopaths. So we do have a consensus of how we should be living. But again, again, you're contradicting yourself, because you're, with all due respect, you're saying that we should have a consensus. The consensus in Nazi Germany was kill the Jews. You're, if you're going to be consistent, you have to say, yeah, we should have let them alone. We should have left them to it. That's their society. That's right for them. It's not right for us, but it's right for them. That's really what you should be saying. But you're not, because you're saying Nazi made the rules. And I would say that's because you're borrowing from the Christian worldview, which says the black man has uh, the black man has intrinsic value, the Jew has intrinsic value, the gypsy has intrinsic value. I'm not saying that. My worldview's not saying that. 
but you just said the society makes the rules and we follow that. If the society makes rules and therefore they're correct, why did we, why did we intervene in Nazi Germany? Because we saw there was harm being done. And what we want to do is the well-being of fellow humans. So you still haven't told me why harm, why harming another individual in your worldview is seen as wrong. Because let, let's bear this in mind, if all we are is evolved bacteria, if all we are is, is bacteria that's crawled out the primordial ooze, we evolved stardust, yes? Yes. If that's all we are, evolved fish, why is it wrong for one lump of cells to kill another lump of cells? So why one, is that wrong? So once again, because ultimately, in your worldview, you're just a, you're just a, um, you're just an evolved bacteria. You're just evolved cells. Yes. And we've evolved if, further if, if, from if that. If that's all I am, if that, if that's all I am too, and we have no intrinsic value, why is it wrong for me to kill you? Once again, we've evolved into intelligent beings, where we can subjectively look at constructs of the world, and if we are harming someone. It's not beneficial. <clears throat> we need to make a standard, and if that standard... Ah, we need to make a standard. Yes. Th this is going back to my point. You're saying we need to make a standard. Nazi Germany made a standard. Uh, Mao Zedong made a standard. Robert Mugabe has made a standard. But me and you would both sit here now and say their standard of morality is wrong. Yes. Why is our standard of morality correct and theirs wrong? I can say from a Christian perspective, their morality, what they're doing, their subjective standard of morality, it's wrong because God says you shall not kill your neighbour. God says you shall love your neighbour. Okay? In your worldview, stuff just happens. There's neither good nor bad, stuff just happens. It's one lump of cells. All we are in this field today, all we are is evolved cells just bumping into each other. So and why is it wrong to kill each other? We have formed an intelligent way how to live and some of these intelligent societies that you say are formed decide to gas six million Jews. And we're not so always 100% correct, so we have to reevaluate. Okay, so if, if, their, if their standard, if the Nazi Germany standard isn't correct, then what standard do you compare that to? I compare that to the standard God has given us. Love your neighbour. Do not kill. Uh, you treat others how you want to be treated. I can, I, can, I can judge that by God's standard. What standard do you have to judge that by? Because ultimately, you're going to say, well, I judge that by my subjective standard. They're going to say, well, I'm also judging it by my subjective standard, and I come out on the end that where we have to kill Jews. You come out on the end where we don't kill Jews. So there, there seems to be a, a contradiction and a conflict between your subjective moralities within these different societies. Do you see my point? Can we construct a consensus whereby a, dem a dem democratic way of living? Okay, but we could only do that if there is such thing as absolute truth. And in the Christian worldview, I can say there is absolute truth. In your worldview, Charles, do you believe in absolute truth? I don't know what that is. Absolute truth. Um, for example, you know, I can say things are absolutely true because I have a standard of truth. God is, God is my standard of truth. God says this is right, that is wrong. I appeal to the standard that God gives us. In your worldview, is there such thing as absolute truth? The consistent answer would be no, because ultimately everything is subjective, so therefore there's no absolute truth. And you were correct there. Everything is subjective. Okay, so do you believe in absolute truth? I don't know what that is. I don't know. I am agnostic about that. Okay, so do you believe do you believe anything can be absolutely true? <clears throat> there may be, but you'd have to show it to me. Okay, is, and okay. once again is it absolutely true we're having this conversation? It's relatively true. No. We might be living in the matrix, I don't okay. know. Okay, so now let's bear this in mind. You just asked me at the beginning of the conversation to give you proof of God. Now you're bringing up the matrix which we can either see, feel, touch or smell. So uh, again, in my worldview, I can say there is such thing as absolute truth. In the consistent atheist worldview, you'd have to say there's no such thing as absolute truth because, as you was arguing for earlier, everything is mere subjective. Yes. So if, if everything is subjective, then you can't believe in absolute truth. So therefore, it's not absolutely wrong to gas the Jews. We have set up you're going back to a de democracy. No, you're going back. To, you know, you're missing. Go no, you're going back to it, but we've already addressed that. 
you're going, you're, you're going back to your point that's already been answered. Again, we set up a democracy. Yes, I agree we do. But there are some societies that have been set up that have, uh, have literally killed millions of people. Now, you're going to say that's wrong. But a minute ago, you say we set, a, we set up the society and we follow that. Then why shouldn't we follow Nazi Germany? Because we saw the harm, the effect that that was having. And again, why, again in your worldview, why is it absolutely wrong to harm someone? In my Listen, I, I can account for morality and the laws of logic in my worldview. I can say there is such thing as absolute truth. I can say morality is objective. There is a standard by which I appeal to. In your worldview, there's no such thing as... You can't really have the laws of logic in your worldview. You can't really have morality as objective in your worldview because, as you just said, society makes the rules we follow that. In my worldview, I have logic and reason. You have logic? Yes. Expound on that. So... I have a brain that thinks about things and comes to a logical con conclusion. Hitler's logical conclusion was he could kill the Jews. Why is your logical conclusion better than his? So Without what? a God, why is your logical conclusion that says we should save the lives of the Jews ro uh, right in comparison to Hitler's uh, brain, which says we should kill the Jews? Why is your subjective morality right and his wrong? Why are we killing another human being? I'd have to... Reason with that. See, I, I would say this that when you say, and I'm glad you do, that it's wrong to kill the Jews, you're absolutely right. And I say that because, but when you do say that, sorry, I think you're, you're, you're stepping into my worldview. You step into my worldview when you say it's absolutely wrong to kill the Jews. You step into the Christian worldview. Because from the Christian perspective, everyone has intrinsic value. We are image bearers of God, we are made in the image of God. In the atheist, agnostic worldview where there is no uh, affirmation of God, Stuff just happens. Stuff just happens. There's no such thing as truth. Everything is subjective. You're kind of generalising. Stuff does happen, and we have to evaluate it, look at it, reason with it, and come to a logical con conclusion. And killing fellow human beings is not beneficial. And I don't think that we need a god for this. We, we have enough faculty and brain to reason. Okay. Do you know what happens when you have a godless society? People often say, you know, religion has caused more deaths. Yes, there have been religious wars. But... Yeah, that's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch um, Sorry, what was I saying? Yeah, so... Do I need a god to tell me the golden rules? Sorry, do, well, without God, you're left up to your own devices. And without God, if we're going to be consistent, you end up with the Adolf Hitlers, who say, I think it's right to kill Jews. And then you end up with the Charles, who says, no, that's wrong. So again, without God, how do we determine, without an absolute objective standard to appeal to, how do we determine which one of those is right and which one is wrong? And you will say harm. Well, yes, ultimately what you're arguing for is, is the, the, the pleasure and harm. We, we should go for pleasure, shun what harms us. There are psychopaths that get pleasure from causing people harm. Does that mean, does that mean, it's, does that mean it's because it's, they get pleasure, they're so always correct? So a psychopath correct. is ultimately harming somebody and we need to stop that. Why? Because... If all we are is brain fish, fish, brain fish, brain fish. If all we are is evolved pond scum, bacteria, it doesn't matter. Stuff. You're, go, you're going no, back no, again. No, because I'm trying to get to the point. You're, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, in a, in a world where we have no intrinsic value, where there is no God, you know, there's, there's nothing after this life. Nothing matters. Nothing matters. You're simplifying this primeval suit. We've evolved. We have now morals, intelligence, logic, where do morals reason. Come, where do morals come from? Where do, where do morals come yes, from? Yes, where does right and wrong come from? And if, again, if you go back to your original... See, this, see you don't want to say it... because you consistent. No, you don't want to say it. from harming. No, you don't want to say it because you know, you're, you're stuck. And that's why I'm you're smiling. Stuck at all. Because when you say, we make up the rules, then you have to say, Nazi Germany, you're fine to do that. But you don't do it, so let's, you're inconsistent. You step into our worldview. make up a rule where we're not harming each other. Is everybody on board with that? Is it, is it absolutely true that it's wrong to harm individuals? Is that absolutely true? I wouldn't say it's absolute. If someone... Was it absolutely wrong for Hitler to kill the Jews? I think so. I think so. I've evaluated it. I've reasoned. It's, it's not correct. Why are you harming a fellow human being because of their religious beliefs?
I think that's incorrect. I think you're and, a, and a lot of other people do. So we have a consensus. We have democracy. I think you're absolutely right to say that the Jew, uh, Hitler was wrong to kill the Jews. But in my in my worldview, I can account for that. I can account for the 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 morality, the uh, objective morality, which says it's absolutely wrong to harm someone. It's absolutely wrong. It's absolutely wrong to kill the Jews. It's absolutely wrong to. It's absolutely wrong to be racist. It's absolutely wrong to kill Jews. It's absolutely wrong to rob a bank. Yes. I can account for that. In your worldview, if all there is is just matter, if all we are ultimately is matter in motion, we're just we're evolved scum. We're matter in motion. Stuff just happens. There is neither right. There is neither wrong. And, it, and you're going to keep saying you're going to be you're going to you're going to continue to keep being inconsistent when you say it is I'm, wrong for I'm, them to I'm do that. I'm being consistent by saying that we've evolved into a bigger and better thing than a primeval suit. We have now faculties to address these things. I think I've already addressed that where we showed that different people's <laughs> faculties differ and therefore they come to different conclusions. They do. See? And I'm glad they differ because we can re evaluate what goes on. We we'll come back to. See, they only differ with a subjective worldview. Because if, if, if you just have a subjective worldview, then you have the, uh, you know, you have the, um, you have the slave trades, you have the Nazi Germany, you have the. Let's talk about the slave trade. Does your Bible advocate for slavery? Does it advocate for slavery? If I'm being absolutely consistent, within the Old Testament there was a form of slavery, but it wasn't a form of slavery that we think of today. In 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 the time we think of slavery, we think of white people going into Africa, dragging people from their homes, which is absolutely disgusting and wrong. I admit. But the Was they allowed one, one, one second, to own a fellow one, human being as property? The, the, the slavery within the Old Testament context. For example, if somebody was to steal from you or, or you know, just destroy your property or something like that, you wouldn't just be thrown in prison where you sit and you, and you and you rot like a, you know, like a waste, like a waste. You don't sit there in a prison cell. You have to work that off. So in the Old Testament, if somebody was to uh, steal from you or something like that, they would have to work for you and they would call that a slave. Because if you steal, if you break into my house and you steal a thousand pounds, yes, you would go to prison for probably quite a while. Yeah, you'd come out of prison. And you'd be no better off. You wouldn't have a job. You would probably lose your house. It would be worse for society. But in the Old Testament, if somebody was to break into someone's house, steal their property, let's say they stole a thousand pounds worth of, of uh, PlayStations or something like that, um, they would have to then pay that off. They would have to be what we call slave and pay that off until they've paid the person back what they owe. I would say that's a much better form than what we have in our modern day where you sit in prison for years and you get, you know, you, you do nothing for society. At least in the Old Testament form of slavery, you actually pay back what you've, what you've destroyed. So in the Old Testament form of slavery, were you allowed to go into other lands, take their women, children, and use them as slaves? In the Old Testament, there were examples of that when you had a war. <clears throat> you have to bear in mind, if, if as the Israelites once did, they, they had a war and they decimated the army, they beat the army, they won the war. When they have their women and children there, you have to bear in mind, in those days, it's a very harsh land. If they destroyed, if they destroyed the, um, the opposing army and they left their women and children as they were, those women and children would die. They wouldn't be able to look after themselves. They wouldn't be able to go off and, and hunt them. You know one, one second, it's, it's fact, not it's fact. So if they, in, in that day, if they were to be left as they were, without men, in, without their husbands and, and fathers and things like that, that had been killed in the war, they'd be left on their own and they would struggle. So when the Israelites would actually adopt them into their society and take them and marry them and, and, and they'd have them like that, it would actually save lives. Yes, otherwise you leave them to it and they've got no man to take care of them. And you may say, well that sounds very male chauvinistic, but well, that's how it was. The, ma the man would run the house, the man would look after you. Without the man, because the, the army being destroyed, without the man in the household, the, the family would struggle. They wouldn't have a figure yet. So the Israelites would take them in. You're allowed to One go second. into other people's lands and enslave them. Okay, let me give you an example. And God knew about this. One, one, one second, let me give you an example. Atheists like yourself will often bring things, this, things like this up. For example, it's a common objection to the Bible where they say, well, in the Old Testament, they, they wiped out the, uh, the Am Amalekites. Okay? Yeah? yeah? You, you may have heard this, yes? Okay. So they use this example. They destroyed the Amalekites, yeah? Why did they destroy these people? Why did the Israelites go to war with certain people? There's a story in the Bible where the, these, these certain groups of people 
would sacrifice their babies on, on an altar. It would basically be like this. The hands would be like that, and they'd, they'd, they'd cause it to be so hot with fire that they would place their babies on this altar, and the babies would burn to death, and, and the pagans would pound their drums so loud so the parents couldn't hear the baby screaming. Terrible. Yes? Terrible. So when God says, go and wipe these people out, the atheists will often say, if God is real, then why doesn't he stop all these bad things happening? Then when he does send people to stop these bad things happening, you still say, God's wrong for destroying these people. You can't have it both ways. God sent these people, God sent the Israelites to stop these people killing their babies. He wiped them out. Then they adopt the women and children into their society. Otherwise, they're left on the, to their own devices. So in fact... And enslaved them. <clears throat> no, not enslaved them. We use the word... No, one, one second. We, no, we use the word slavery. It's not, the, it's not in the terms we use it today. For example, in the New, in the New Testament, uh, Paul writes about... Paul, Paul writes that masters should treat their slaves uh, respectfully. You shouldn't beat your slaves. You shouldn't treat your... You shouldn't mistreat your slaves. Because in those days, People had slaves. That's how the world worked. If you didn't, is there one, one a Bible verses saying you're allowed to beat your slave? Sorry. Is there a Bible verse that says you're allowed to beat your slave? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So you're saying you're saying okay. With that argument you're about to use, I'm, I'm going to once again show you why you're inconsistent. If there is a Bible verse that says you're allowed to beat your slave, is that wrong? Yeah. Okay. By what standard is that wrong? People. Why is that wrong? Again, it goes back to our original point. You can say, well, God was wrong for this, God was wrong for that. But when you say something is wrong or evil, you are assuming the Christian worldview by saying something is wrong and evil. Because to say something is evil presupposes there's good, and good presupposes there is a God. Do I need a Bible to tell me what's good and bad? Romans chapter 1 tells you that no, you don't need a Bible to know what's good and bad. Romans chapter 1 said... Is one it second, innate? One second. Romans chapter 1 tells us that although they knew God, if you read Romans chapter 1 verses 18 and onwards, it says although they knew God, they suppressed the truth in their unrighteousness. Because it's been clear to them, as, as Romans chapter 1 says, it's clear to them that there is a God, Look around you. Creation itself testifies there's a God. So I'm looking around me right now, and I don't see a God. I would say you are you are the person that Romans one mentions a few verses before. You're suppressing the truth in your in your unrighteousness. I'm not suppressing the truth. I'm looking <coughs> around me, and I don't see a God. Okay. Do you see a God? I absolutely see God when I look at creation. Yes, I look at creation. And I see this must have come from somewhere. It must have. It must have come from somewhere. Yes. It must have come from somewhere. If, 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 as we know, <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Forgive me. Can you hear me, JC? Yeah. So, if, if, as we know, the universe uh, is expanding, as we know it is. Yes. If the universe is expanding, it must have had a starting point, and to have a starting point. It must have had a starter, it must have had someone to cause it. And well, you might then say, okay, but if that's the case, then who created God? And the Christian response is this. Are you talking for me? I am talking for you, yes. Oh. And, and the, Christian response is, the Christian response is this, is that when people say, well, who created God? The Christian response, and maybe we'll finish with this, because I know JC wants to get some other videos. The Christian response is this, is that God is the uncaused cause. Is it? Because if God had a creator, then that God, who created God, must have also had a creator. Imagine this, imagine there's a sniper in the army, yes? Yeah. And he needs to get permission off his commander to take the shot. Yes. Let's imagine that, that commander needs to get permission off his commander, and it goes back and back and back. If there's no one to say, take the shot, yeah. the shot will never get taken. Uh -huh. It's the same thing with creation. There needs to be a first cause, and that first cause must be uncaused to cause everything else. Otherwise it's called an infinite regression. It goes back and back and back, and that doesn't work. But I'm losing my voice now. Can we, can maybe right. we could, uh... you, you spoke in quite a lot. Right? I did, yeah. You spoke in for me. I did, yeah. I did. I had to make some good arguments. <laughs> you can do a quick wrap up about this discussion and then I'll. I'll, 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 I'll Cool. Yeah. Right, Ben, what happened there? Okay, yeah, um, forgive me, I'm losing my voice. Charles is a very nice man, we spoke a few times before. Um, I do think he has some inconsistencies in his worldview because he makes claims like the Nazi Germany was wrong for killing the gays, the gypsies, the Jews and the black people. I point out that's wrong from the Christian perspective because we can actually account for morality. We can say it's wrong to murder because we are made in the image of God. As image bearers of God, it's wrong to harm another human being. God says in his word, love your neighbour as yourself, uh, <clears throat> do not murder, etc, etc. So therefore we have a standard to appeal to. From the atheist worldview, there is no standard to appeal to. Ultimately, if all we are is evolved pond scum, stardust, we've crawled out of the primordial ooze, 
then ultimately we are just brain fizz, we are chemical reaction, we are matter in motion. Therefore, if somebody gets killed, it doesn't matter, stuff just happens. So I think what you should do is look into the atheist worldview, where, where they cannot account for morality, you cannot account for the laws of logic. In the Christian worldview, we can, we can in fact account for both of those things. Thank you. Thank you, Ray.